today 12 things every reefer should know about what can an aquarium controller do for your reef. What we wish somebody had told us day one. Starting with the direct answer, a monitor or controller will prevent crashes, reduce maintenance hours, organize or automate undesirable tasks, and allow you to travel and sleep at night. This video will show you how. Number two, every experienced reefer is here today because they have embraced that everything breaks and mistakes will be made. It's how fast that you notice and how prepared you are for that eventuality that will define whether or not you have a tank tomorrow. That's what all the controllers or monitors are about. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, it might have been about all the features and automation that you could have got in your tank, but really that's for a small subset of people. For everybody else, it's I just want to protect all of the work that I put into this because it's true. All of it will break one day. <laughs> it's true. And how prepared you are will define your future. Number three, a smart monitor can set off a local audible alarm as well as real-time mobile alerts for issues like leaks, pH, temperature, power outages, flow rates, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, salinity, water quality, and malfunctioning equipment. Who wouldn't want to know about these things in real time? I mean, it's, it's absolutely astounding how much these things can do. And what surprises me the most is that people don't often understand the value that they offer. Yeah, you know what? I remember the first time I set up my pinpoint uh, pH oh, yeah. controller. I didn't know what it was actually testing. So when it was off, I didn't know what to do. Now we learn through all of these series, we'll figure out what we're monitoring with uh, all of our probes mm -hmm. and what they're telling us and then how to react to it to save the tank. Number four, you have a dozen controllers on your tank right now, but they're just not that smart. Yeah, so uh, anybody who says they don't have a controller means that you're standing at the wall and unplugging your heater, uh, <laughs> trying to maintain the temp. You plug in your lights in the morning, you pull them out at night. Uh, you're doing all that with your power heads, everything else. Of course, nobody does that. So uh, you have controllers all over your tank. They just happen to not really talk to each other. They don't really talk to you and they never really tell you when they fail. Really, there's not a lot to them other than this thing is designed to turn the, you know, the heat on and off and really that's limited to it. So we actually all have controllers on our tanks. We're just choosing to trust probably the least reliable ones <laughs> out there and we can fix that. Number five, the easiest smart controller is just a remote controller. And really all that means is that when I'm away from home, I can turn it on and off. Yeah, I think that like the idea of programming a controller is where you lose a lot of people. Yeah, it's not really all that hard, uh, especially with like tasks and stuff. You just say it's a skimmer and go through the pattern. <laughs> right. But uh, even outside of that, if that's still the case, I don't really want to do that. Remote control means that I get an alarm on my phone, says that the heater's stuck on. I can either like run home to go unplug the heater or I can just hit the button and toggle it off. Yep. That's remote control. Uh, I'm <laughs> at a remote location. I'm on vacation. I'm at work, uh, at wherever I might be, man. I'm out with the beers with the guys. I just turn the, <laughs> uh, off the heater. I'll deal with it in a couple of hours. So that means you don't have to really do a whole lot other than the thing told me something was wrong and I had the ability to do it without racing home. Number six, a better solution. Actually, the next step up is controller redundancy, where equipment and sensors are actually backed up. So when you get an alert, rather than just being able to say on or off, something might actually kick in by itself. Yeah, I think if you pulled like every 10, reef, 10 year reefer that you know, somebody who's been doing this for a long time, 99% of them have backed up their heater with Absolutely. a controller. Uh, it could be just like an Inkbird controller <laughs> or it could be one of those Phoenix controllers, but I'm not just relying on this thing, yeah. you know? Uh, and then there's 1% that's lucky. So somehow <laughs> they made lucky. it uh, to 10 years about that way. So uh, controller redundancy, that same group it would actually just use that word redundancy is redundancy means you'll be successful. You know, assume the worst, mm -hmm. uh, plan for it, and you will be more successful than those that don't do either of those things. So in this case, uh, you can use a controller uh, like the, uh, with a heater, uh, where you can use the uh, Phoenix or you mm -hmm. can use an Inkbird, you can back it up, or you can take a more robust approach and use an actual aquarium controller that can do that, plus a whole bunch of other things. Number seven, the controller that wears out the fastest or is least trusted should be first. I need to be able to trust the backup will work whenever I need it to. What he's getting at is should the Apex controller or the GHL controller control the heater mm -hmm. and then the heater's controller back it up or should it be the mm -hmm. other way around? There's a debate to be had. <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of people will instinctively use the most expensive thing first. Yeah. The thing that you trust the most should be first. In my mind, 
I need to know that the backup is going to work when I when it needs to work. So I'm going to put the weakest thing, being the you know mm -hmm. uh, heater's own controller or whatever controller for a piece of equipment you have, first. And then I'm going to back it up with the thing that I trust the most, yeah. which is going to be the Apex or, or the GHL. GHL controller. Yeah. So uh, you can think about this either way, but for me, the thing that's going to fail first shouldn't be behind <laughs> because know. it probably already failed by the time the other one did. Uh, you can do this debate for yourself, but that's how we do it. Number eight, the best solution will make your life easier. We're talking about testing, feeding, maintenance modes, logs, notes, auto water changes, auto top off dosing chemicals. I mean, the list goes on and on. I think this is historically where everybody landed again yeah. with uh, uh, controllers. Like it's gonna do my testing yes. for me. It's gonna do my water changes for me. It's gonna automate all these things for me. And absolutely these things are all valuable, of course. right? Uh, for me, protect the investment and my time and the animals I care for always comes first. But uh, after that, yes, I like auto water changes. Yes. Yeah, no, I don't like filling up my auto <laughs> top off. I also don't like testing calcium mm -hmm. and alkalinity. I would love it if somebody did it for me, not only did it for me, but also put it into graphs. Right. I'd also love it if somebody told me when to clean my pumps, so I'm just not doing it mm -hmm. randomly for no reason, or letting those things get uh, so dirty that they're doing like a quarter of the flow <laughs> and I didn't even know it. So I'd like things to tell me all that and make my life easier. The right controller for you will do that for you and your tank. Number nine, we're beating a dead horse here a little bit, but 100 out of 100 reefers would agree that those who know about an issue the moment that it happens are more successful than those that rely on luck or that you just happen to be there. Uh, I gotta tell you, when I started this, that's the way it was. Oh, 100%. I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't want to know about something life or death the moment it happens? If you put this with your pets, with your family, if something's going wrong, you need to know the second. You know, the conundrum here is back then, uh, about 90% of reefers didn't make it past the first year, Holy. right? Okay, so we wonder why that is and how do we solve it? And really it means embracing all of the reasons right. that uh, <laughs> you, your tank could go down. What you're maintaining here is like a little ecosphere. Yeah. You're maintaining temperature, you're maintaining the chemistry, you're maintaining light energy, you're maintaining uh, flow, yep. you're maintaining all these things to simulate Fiji here in Minnesota or down at your oh, house right. in Palm Springs. A desert and a winter state is not where these things live. <laughs> uh, and so uh, 100 out of 100 reefers would say, relying on just luck and hoping that it doesn't happen while I'm at work for the 10 hours that I'm there or eight hours that I'm sleeping. It's mm -hmm. just like, when I look at it, it's just a really, really bad path. <laughs> Number 10, let's just pretend you ignored all that counsel. Listen, just one thing. 100 out of 100 reefers agree that having a redundant heater controller alone will triple the three year success rates. The heater is the most likely thing to fail in oh. your tank. If you watch any of our content, you'll know that. <laughs> uh, if you ask any reefer that's been doing this for a while, you will know that. Uh, and here is the reason why. A lot of the most popular heaters out there are only warranted, man, for six months. Six months? That means the manufacturer is the one that thinks that it's only gonna last six months. <laughs> oh, it's no. us that thinks it's gonna last <laughs> many, many, many years. It's just not true. So if you back up that one thing, controller backed up with another controller, if that's the only thing you heard today, do that. Number 11, we're down to my number one takeaway today. You don't have to buy every piece of controller gear to find success. Start out small and then add as time and budget allows. Uh, it is a hobby and we all have a budget. Uh, <laughs> and some of us also have somebody that controls our budget for us. <laughs> uh, and so uh, in that case, you might want to think about, all right, how do I get the things that will be the yes. most impactful? Uh, in fact, I asked somebody uh, when I was shopping for something the other day and I asked him if it was really worth it. And what they said is, yeah, man, that's a great thing. Except for you got to think about the entire room and everything that's mm. going into it you might have a better place to spend some of that money. So right up front here, it might not actually be the controller. It might be just a monitor or something yeah. that you get to tell you, and then you can build upon it as long as it's scalable. I, I want to be able to add things because I'll be honest too, for a lot of people, part of the hobby is the technology yes. and the gear junkie and understanding the reefing. So it might even be better to start out small and then build upon it as you learn more. My number one takeaway from today is loaned from a book called Great by Choice. The counsel is be productively paranoid. The only mistakes that you can learn from are the ones that you survive. 
Successful reefers assume that conditions can unexpectedly change, often violently and fast. They obsessively ask, what if, by preparing ahead of time, they handle disruptions productively without issue? Being great by choice is redundancy and monitors and controllers is all about. All right, so did you learn something unexpected? There's more in our controllers did you know playlist right here. New episodes of Beers TV released every Monday and Friday.